So, with the uh, tour book ended, what are we going to do now? I don't know, something else. Also, you might notice that I actually named this flipping folder. I've only been using it for... When did I start? Like... How long have I been using this world and I just named it now? Let's see. Uh, uh, first episode of uh, Time Granite. The first episode of Time Granite was in May. And I just named this flipping thing now. Oh dear. Anyway, I'm sorry, this minute is completely wasting your time. I'm just going to click, uh... We're going to do another fortress, obviously. Yeah. Tell you the start of a fortress, that's always a nice bit. And... Yeah. So we're going to start a new fortress. And... Yeah. Then we will do stuff I suppose what stuff I don't know yet but stuff oh actually I do slightly know you see I realized something we never did pretty much anything with religion last time this time I intend to actually uh, you know do a little bit of building temples again because there was absolutely no temples in Torbuk. Now. However, first things first. Let's see. The living bodices is what we named. The foggy glazes also exists. The armory of roofs. The fin channels and the bolts of wood. Funnily enough, the living bodices here set up a fortress right there, and yet they're down here. Meanwhile, the bolts of wood pretty much only exist up here. Hmm. Hmm. Right, I'd say we're going to do a bolts of wood because I don't. We've never done a bolts of wood. We never messed with the bolts of wood. And we're going to set up a fortress somewhere down... Somewhere down away from them. Away from their main areas. Oh my. This looks like some interesting terrain. Yeah, look at that. Right, so. Uh, okay, and let's see. There, yes, and only one biome. I mean, oh, whoops. <laughs> Yeah, I guess here. I'm feeling like here. You see, because, you know, they're mostly situated up here. So it would only make sense for them to want to expand downwards into the, uh... You know, downwards a bit. Wouldn't it? Embark. Prepare for the journey carefully, I suppose. We'll set someone with some mining skill. We'll set two people with mining skill. Not much mining skill though. A carpenter with some wood cutting abilities. A mason engraver. Why not? Oh wait, you're not just going to be a carpenter. You're also going to have some... Uh, we'll just give you other wood related activities. Yeah, sure. You, uh... Stone crafter as well, yes. 
you I don't know brewer herbalist grower fresher miller a lot of work for one dwarf I know but you'll be fine you I oh, bloody know butcher and tanner to a good degree so that you'll actually do that and I won't have to think about setting that up and uh you I don't know I guess I'll just have a proficient liar in the fortress. Yeah. Just just a proficient liar who lives in the fortress. <laughs> Item on here. Be merry. He is loaded a tall body with incredible muscles. His very long sideburns are neatly combed. His very long moustache is neatly combed. His very long beard is braided. His long hair is neatly combed. He has a recessed round chin. His ears have large hanging lobes. His eyelashes are extremely long. His eyebrows are quite sparse. His hair is buff. His skin is dark tan. His eyes are ochre. You? Dark tan, buff. And your eyes are... Brass. Oh, a bit of eye colour diversity. Dark tan and buff hair seem to be the main thing, but eyes vary. Yeah, amethyst eyes here, so even blooming purple. <laughs> good, good. Uh, new, I guess. Let's get something. Get what? I don't know. Maybe a bit of just random bits of cloth just in case you never know when you might need that and uh guess an iron cap because why the hell not and uh I don't know we don't I don't know just Bunch of one humped camel cheese because why the hell not? I mean, we already have dwarven ale and Ryan, I'm pretty sure. No, we have dwarven rum and beer. A bit of random dwarven ale just because. A uh, little bit of vulture leather. And, uh, copper short sword, I guess. Ah, oh, no, I'm not really particularly caring. I don't know if you can tell. I'm not particularly caring about what we're grabbing here. You know, I'm curious what, what this giant figurine is of. It's a giant figurine of something. And one bit of chinchilla meat, because, yes. The intents... Oh, that's V, not... I thought I was doing something wrong. Let's see, intents... Scorching, sure, why not? That sounds fine. And the fortress's name will be... I like to have the idea of both of them having intents. Intents... Uh... I mean... Intent, intense scorch... Scorches? Scorn? Intense scorn with the intense. I mean, intense scorpions is a pretty good name. Yeah, intense scorpions. That's a good name. Right, so we're intense scorpions. Let me just uh, make a quick note of that. 
Are we actually recording? We better be. Yes, we are. Marvellous. Come on. Here we go. Very good. Uh, Maybe I should put like a time thingy my bob in the video in order to break up the actually making the fortress and uh, you know being done with it and then actually playing the fortress yeah yeah that sounds great as an idea actually I think I'm gonna do that Right, so Intense Scorpions is going to be the name of the fortress. Yes, we already established that. I don't know why I'm reiterating it to you. You already were here. And the creature, and our symbol is obviously going to be Scorpion, but what kind of Scorpion? A giant Bark Scorpion sounds pretty intense. So yeah, a giant bark scorpion. And it is uh, screaming. Yes, that sounds like a very intense scorpion. It's screaming. The Scorpion of Intensity. Yes, marvellous name, marvellous. Okay, yes. So, we are going to be Intense Scorpions. The Intense Scorching of the Intense Scorpions. As symbol is an intense looking scorpion. And yeah. And on our team is going to be Iton, who's a very... Who lies... <laughs> you know, with Iton, they're just going to be known as... They're just going to always be known as Liar. That's just always going to be Iton's name. You know, because even though they're going to become the leader of this place because of their incredible lying skills, they're just going to always be just known as Liar. <laughs> Ah. Right then, so here we are. We've arrived. Blah, blah, blah. With, you know, this text. So we're just going to press enter and here we go. Yeah, I think about there's where we're going to have the timestamp for if you want to skip the intro. And Dwarf Fortress is not responding. Give it a second. Give it a second. It'll be fine. Okay, maybe we need to move the timestamp a little bit forwards. <sighs> Terrific. There we go. Okay, pause the video, now let's check the time, it's about 14 minutes, so yeah, sure, that's where it's going to be. Right then, so here we are, Intense Scorpions of, yeah, Intense Scorpions. Nice calm looking river there, although it doesn't look like it's traversable. Okay, dig into there. Uh, cut down a twee. Or two. Why not two? But yeah, Intense Scorpions is not actually very scorpion themed. We're not even in a warm place. <laughs> the chances of seeing scorpions is next to none. But it's a good name.
Right, we're just gonna have a little up down stair here. And an up down stair here. And an up down stair here. And we're gonna go over. To the other side. Yeah, this is more going to be just an access tunnel than anything. Of course, we're going to make it more big. More big. Great sentence. But yeah. Oh, you can just walk over there, eh? <laughs> okay, stop everything. You can literally just walk over this brook, I thought, because there was an underwatery bit that you couldn't. Never mind then. I don't know what I'm doing here, just, uh, yeah, that's, and the trade depot entrance is going to be like here. In fact, we're going to just completely wall off the bit that's already there. So yeah, that's uh, the plan. That's some idea of a plan. I'm gonna turn down the music. Oh yeah, see, they can just walk over that. I don't know why. I mean, it's light blue. Obviously, they can walk over it. Goodness me, stone. You know what things look like. Can't say I'm a fan of that. Okay, we're gonna do something here because I don't like this whole this little patch of where a tree is here. So I'm gonna have it cut into. I'm gonna cut down the tree and then I'm gonna cover that entire area with flooring. Possibly just made of that tree. Oh, white sand. Look at that. That is pretty. Okay, construct a floor. Naturally, you can't put a floor on the, uh, well, sky. Yeah. So just put a floor there so things will be fine. Where's the trade depot is oh it's capital D <laughs> yeah. 
I suppose that makes sense. Oh yeah, I guess I'm doubting anyone has architecture. So dull. There you go. <sighs> but yeah, nice. Uh, but yeah, this area will. Maybe we'll even put a nice bit of public. A public space here. Yeah. That way, if anything attacks, they'll be the first to die! Ha ha ha! Oh yeah, two doors will go there. For now, we're gonna pop a uh, carpenter's shop here so we can actually, you know, set up the uh, what you call it. Put in the doors. Yeah, we're gonna set up a carpenter's shop and make this temporary temple area as well. Yeah, we'll have this have a very unique shape, just a bunch of random shape, pink, shape, sh shape, it'll be shape shaped, it'll be shaped like it is shaped, yes. There we go, that's a shape. Now we can just sit and watch them make the shape. Okay, I'll be able to get away with putting a uh, temporary workshop in about there. What are these uh, flowers here? Cassavas, bit of melon vines, eggplant. Eggplant. What's what's eggplant in proper? <laughs> I said improper, but it's not any less true. I'm just saying what 
the hell is an eggplant in English? Like, English English, not American English, which, you know, it's still a perfectly valid form of English. I'm not going to say that it isn't. I'm just saying that I don't actually know... I'm just saying that I know that we have a word for it that's different and I can't quite put in my head what the hell those are. So I need to find out that answer to that question. You know what I mean? It's the same language in two different flavours. Well, in multiple different flavours. I don't know what Canadians call uh, those. That's a different flavour of English too. Probably eggplant because they're close to... I don't know. We'll see. If you are Canadian, tell me. What the hell do you call these? You know what I call them? I'll tell you in a second when it loads and I can actually find out what the hell they're actually called in this language. In this variant of the language, anyway. Let's see. Aubergine, that's what they're called. Ah, eggplant is what it's called in the US, Australia, New Zealand, and Canadian English. Aubergine is us, as in the UK, Ireland, Quebec, Quebec of all places, and most of mainland Europe. Oh, I guess that makes sense because aubergine does sound pretty French. It's probably the French word for it, isn't it? I'd presume, anyway. But yeah, an aubergine. That's what I would know this as. I partially knew that already, but I didn't want to get confused, you know, like... I didn't want to embarrass myself. Embarrass? Just say the wrong... You know. It's also apparently called a Brinjal in South Asia, Singapore, Malaysia and South Africa. So in South African English. Interesting. So many words for one thing, eh? <laughs> uh, humans. Can't decide on anything, can we? This is a thing that exists. What do we call it? I think we should call it this. I'm going to call it this and I'm going to call it this. <sighs> I'm rambling in order to have something to talk about while I'm mining this out, by the way. I don't know if you can tell. But look, every way that you can say aubergine is correct, you know? It's like the ways you spell colour are correct, you know? You want to spell colour without the U, that's up to you, I suppose, and where you're from. If you're going to pronounce apricot as apricot, that's also fine. Doesn't sound natural to me, but I'm not from a place that does that, so of course it won't. Apricot. Not apricot to me. Why is it always the bloody fruits and vegetables? Anyway, let's just let's just get some food. Gather me some plants. Because we're talking about fruits. Gather me some fruits. Okay, that's all built up now. Down. Now down here we're going to have uh, another staircase. I don't know. I know that there's a staircase design that's the proper staircase design that every... You know. But we're just going to do this instead because... Because I felt like it. It's a good enough reason, I'd say. Oh, wait. 
Oh yeah, that's right. There's going to be water, isn't there? Okay, stop everything. We need to just check. Oop. Oops, a doos. <laughs> Whoops, a daisy. Right. So. And we'll just go like. Let's see, how many is this? One, two, three. One, two, three. One. One. Yeah, sure, that'll do. <sighs> oh, wait, I forgot. We were supposed to set up a temporary temple and shit in here, weren't we? That was literally the entire point. Well, not the entire point. We're going to, you know, set up a other thing later on, but, you know. Add location. This will be a non-specified temple. Speaking of, this will give us time to look at the religions of the local peoples. Buffett Climax Growl. That is a... That is a name. God of Death and War. Ustuf. Fortresses. Pretty much all Dwarven Sivs have a Fortresses God. Utust the... Something. The Avalanche of... Them. That's earth and volcanoes. Erib, just just Erib. You're right, Erib. Mountains. Daros, wealth and jewels. There's the armored denomination and Ustuth worshipper. The denomination, the denomination of, the denomination of defenses. The coven of scars. We worship Ustuth. Two Ustuth. One Buffet, two Buffet, the Fellowship of Calling. The doctrine, the blockaded doctrine is also Ustuf, and the Cult of Rocks is an Erib. So, what I'm getting from this and the fact that there's three worshippers in our fortress right now is Ustuf is the most popular deity in this religion, in this place. Right, that's a non. No. I don't want any, uh, I don't want any non-citizens coming in and right, you know, not yet, not at the moment. Right, and there'll be a little private tavern here, meeting area. Add location. This is going to be the inn slash tavern. The walled plum. The walled plum. For the moment it's just for citizens and long term residents. Yeah. Those patches of ground will now be respected as those things. Right, so there is water here, so mine into it and mine around it. It's gonna get a job cancellation, I'm sure. Yep, there we go. Cancel the jobs, but I'm gonna tell you to do it anyway. Yeah, that's a lot of water. Already a drop of it. Right, and up here we'll tell them to cut down another tree just because. Oh yeah, there's yak and that still, aren't there's pack animals still, aren't there? 
thinking we should have them murdered for food. So we're just going to quickly set up a small area. Small out of the way, going to have butchery capabilities. And tanning capabilities of course as well. And a long hallway. At the bottom of which is going to be a stockpile for all their refuse bits of the miasma. You know. Just to store the miasma. Inducing rot. Yeah, I got a... Dry water buffalo bull and a yak cow. Mmm. Think of all the meat in them. You finished. Not quite, but you can put in another wall at least. Butcher's shop. Well, we just needed a tanner's shop, didn't we? That was. Eh, yeah, never mind. Look, someone's already meditating. Very specifically to Ustuth. Yep. Ustuth. Let's see. Female dwarf associated with fortresses. Dwarf necromancer corrupted someone using the shared belief in us stuff. Also with the shared appears in us stuff. Yeah. So some Dwarven Necromancers are using Ustuf to convince people to be criminals. Or at least they were. So, you know, that's, uh, that's not great. But we can't judge Ustuf for that. It's not Ustuf's fault that they're just so damn worshipped. Also, being worshipped, like, Bush tough worship isn't exactly a rare thing, but I guess the appeal still works because hey, we believe in the same deity. So, yeah. Let's remove ramps from around here because that's a bit messy. And remove the ramps from this wall side too. Huh. 
No table, but we do have a chair now. So we can put a chair like here. And we'll have a table for that chair soon enough. Oh, I think we already do now. No, we don't. What? What did you just build then? Did I order you to make a door quicker? I possibly did and forgot about it. No, look, the table is the action that's taking place right now. Oh, I need to get myself a drink, so I'll be back in a second. All this talking is... talking. I'm not like someone who can just talk for hours, you know. I'll be back in a second with a drink. Goodbye for now. But I'll be back in a second. I am back. Yes, I am back. I see that all the butcher's stuff has been set up in the time that I've been gone. Which wasn't that long. Now this isn't, this is literally just a rectangle. Yeah, I don't really like that it's just a rectangle. You know, where's the, where's the interestingness to just a rectangle? There we go. That's a slightly more interesting shape. So how are people thinking? Annoyed at the lack of chairs? Don't worry, we'll be getting you some more chairs soon enough. I can assure you of that. And everyone's going to get annoyed at the lack of cups soon enough, I know they are. Uh, you know... I'm going to set this on a 5 priority so that it doesn't supersede the uh, nicening up of the whatchamacallit. But I want to have a nice wood crafting area. Nice and, nice and near the surface, you know. Because wood is found near the surface. So of course, logically where you'll put wood crafting areas is near the surface. So they don't have to drag it a long way. Yeah, this will be like the stockpile. This is too small, if you ask me. Yeah, this will be the wood stockpile, and the other room there will be where the wood crafting actually and carpentry actually happens. Yeah. Also, since we have 
No bedrooms, yes, we'll just put down two beds. Maybe just a still somewhere. Yeah, just like a still here for now. Why not? Another table and a chair. Someone's eating a meal. What are you eating there, dwarf? A cave lobster. What about you? Prepared naked mole dog heart. Mmm. I can see why you brought that with you. <laughs> Someone has brewing, I know they do. But let people socialise for now. Liar, of course, become the expedition leader because they're a liar. They got all the lying skills. Yeah. You know, it would be funny if Liar happens to value honesty. He personally finds sacrifice the heights of volley, values peace over war, values cunning, values loyalty, doesn't see the attainment of important, dreams of crafting a masterwork. Honesty is a high ideal. <laughs> and yet they're the best and yet I made them the best liar. <laughs> Honesty is a high ideal, but they are just so good at lying. You know? It's a conflict in that character. Like they think honesty is a good ideal, but lying is just so easy. For them. Let's also just put a kitchen here. You know, I'm not even going to pretend that those aren't permanent, they're just going to be there forever. Yeah, we're not going to put an arbitrary number of parts on this. Yeah, brew me some drink from plant. Dwarves are drinking. Oh shit. Uh, 
How bad did that sound? I need to make a note of when that happened so I can check how bad that sounded. That was about 50. <laughs> I apologise for that, it just fell over. I do not have the most quality of setups, you know. <laughs> oh dear. Because I don't have that kind of money. Ah, oh, dearie me. You know, for now, dormitory, sure, why the hell not? It, I know technically speaking I could just make a, I could literally just make any old part of this place into a, uh, I could just make them into one size bedrooms and the dwarves would like it more, but you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because dormitories are literally useless and I feel bad about never having any use for them because they're literally useless. Oh, a story is being told of the dwarf necromancer Tobal becoming the... Excuse me, what? Are you telling me that I'm in a sort of civilization Whose queen is a necromancer? Yeah, Tobal is still our queen. The queen minor. Well, at least they're a minor, so... You know, she's got some. She's clearly got some goodness to them. <laughs> so yeah, our religion... So yeah, our fortress's government is ruled by a necromancer. Oh, that's great. I completely forgot to do the thing. Better do the thing now. You know the thing, the uh, butchery. Right. Now, animals. Slaughter, slaughter. Here they go. Butchered. <laughs> I saw someone carrying that barrel. That's to go brew drink from plant. Summer has arrived, how lovely. And the stray water buffalo has been slaughtered as well, how lovely.
Right, this will be a big wood stockpile. Just an absolutely massive wood stockpile. Yes. And over here in this corner, we'll set up a little bit of furniture. Bed, 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 bed. Table. Chair. Door, 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 door. All right, let's go down a little. Down another. Because we still haven't gone down any further, even though we... <sighs> because I didn't think about it, you know, I've been, I've been doing other things in the fortress. Oh no, what is that? What's flying around our butcher's shop? Flies, that's what's flying around our butcher's shop. Ah, oh, that's just not good. Ah. <sighs> Alright, let's place another table, like, here. A nice ta- that's a nice table. That is a masterwork table, it's not actually made of nice. <laughs> but it is a nice table, despite not being made of nice. <laughs> <sighs> what is these seas running about? Cavies. We got ourselves some bloody guinea pigs. You know, no one knows why guinea pigs are called that. They're not from Guinea and they are not pigs. But that's just something that they're called. Of course, in Dwarf Fortress Cave, he's the most notable for not actually making any meat, despite being an animal that is literally started its existence being bred as meat. What is this in the sky here? A lung. What? Wait a second, what the f... Why is there a lungfish in the open air? Um, am I missing something here? The fuck? That doesn't sound right. What is a lungfish? That doesn't sound right at all. Lungfish in the open air, floating about. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, what the stupid thing, don't do that. Okay, so let's see here.
Yeah, lungfish are fish. Oh, here it is in the... The lungfish is also well known for its place in nature and ability to fly. So this is a known thing. Right, so it's a known bug that lungfish can be found in the air. Inexplicably. Yeah, because I knew lung... Because lungfish... Yeah, they're amphibians. I thought so. Because they're fish that can breathe in the air for a bit. But they can't fly. But I guess because they're set as external animals as well as it... You know, because they can go into the... Uh, I mean, I don't think they're legally amphibians, but... No, no, they are. Wait, are they? Is a... Vasithidin... Let's see... Share many traits with... Lungfish swear specific other traits with amphibians. But are you an amphibian? I don't think you are. Or are you? The fuck are you? You're a lungfish, I know that, but what is a lungfish? You're a fish, but you go into the air, but you're not an amphibian. But you are amphibious in the sense that you water and air. And ah, oh, fuck, this is... Humans try to categorise things, but how can you categorise animals? Have you seen animals? They are ununderstandable messes. Abandon hope, all who hope to categorise animals. Your failures only empower them. And we are running out of wood again. Oh, for God's sake. I told you idiots to put... Like, you idiots... I guess that it's my fault for having two things butchered at once and expecting these people to be able to handle that much. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, probably should have spaced it out a bit more, but, you know... What's done is done. Wait, chair. Chair for the table. You know, we need a manager set up. Now, managers don't necessarily need their own office, but I much prefer them to have their own office. There we go. I don't know which one's going to be the office and which one is going to be their personal bedroom, because of course they get a personal bedroom. Oh, God. Maybe we should put in some doors on this. Let's get a chest or two, why not? Uh, door, that's what I was thinking about.
we should probably just get rid of that now. This. Yeah, just, just have that removed. That's a wall. There we go. Nobles, bookkeeper, who's also going to be the manager, and you know what, they're going to be the expedition leader too. Liar is going to do a lot of shit for now. They lied about their credentials. Wait a second. No, no, no. That's a dining room by accident, isn't it? Yeah, this is a dining room. <laughs> Oops. Free the table. We need an office. There we go. Now there's a chair so we can set up an office. Or a dining room. And set up a door there. Who are you and why are you eating there? Tekud? You know, you're a lover of Sodal, but you're a close friend of Liar. <laughs> okay, I guess. Also good to know that there's some love happening in this fortress. So wait, who are you though? I could do without all those creatures and that tangled greenery. So let's see, Tekkard is lover of this farmer, Sodal. He is the lover of Tekkard. And this is Tekkard, so he is uh, his boyfriend. Hey? Okay. Oh look at that! Now this is something you don't actually see happen every day. We got ourselves a gay relationship in the fortress. You know, it's possible, but it just doesn't happen very often. It's, you ever notice this? It doesn't actually seem to happen as often as I, as really I feel like it should, but yeah. Because I know dwarves, the majority of them are heterosexual, then the second largest group is bisexual, then there's aces, like yours truly, and then there's also gay dwarves too. And each dwarf has their own personal views on romance, which is not related to their sexuality, which is good, very good. I mean, I happen to also be a romantic, but, uh, you know, that's that's me more than anything. So, yes, yeah, Sodal, he and Tekkud could get married at some point. Wouldn't that be lovely? Or maybe they're not ready for that. Meanwhile, the others, this one's just got a bunch of close friends. Just everyone else. They're the only romance in the fortress by the looks of it. Yeah. Alright, romance in the fortress. Good. Am I the only one who notices that it doesn't happen as oft as that much, in though? Like, when you're going through legends and you see someone's got a spouse, they're almost always the opposite gender. You know?
Also, settings. I want this to be nice and... Now, I know you're called Liar, but I want you to make sure that our stocks are nice and correctly set up. Okay, we're out of logs. These trees still haven't been cut down for some reason. I'm not sure why that would be. Like... You there. Well, no, not you there. I guess it's because you're the car- the carpenter's the only one who actually has the skills required, eh? Right then, I know what to do then. You! Labour. No. What I meant to say is preferences. You're on wood cutting, as well as your herbalist duties. Get to it. Yeah, pick up a pick up an axe and cut down them fucking trees. There we go. Yes, we've got our wood to make stuff with now. Wait, I just realised. We never put the other bits of this in. Oh yes, intense scorpions. Dwarf Fortress Intense Scorpions Part 1? Part 1 or should it be Episode 1? Uh, part, part feels right. Yeah, Intense Scorpions Part 1. There will be no scorpions. <laughs> because there won't be any scorpions. I don't think scorpions can spawn in this environment. Giant monarch butterfly. Jesus. Look at him. Bloody hell. That is majestic. And terrifying. Look at it go. A swarm of giant monarch butterfly. There won't be any scorpions in intense scorpions, but that's still a pretty intense sight. Okay. So. I'm thinking about ending the episode now. We've done a bit, haven't we? So yeah. Next time we, uh... Put... 
the temple. In a more permanent spot. Add more temples. Specific ones. Make the tavern fill the room. Make bedrooms. Go down. Oh, migrants arrived. Panic about the migrants. So yeah, that's the plan for next time. We'll put the temple in a more permanent spot, add specific temples, make the tavern fill the room, make bedrooms, go down, and panic about the migrants. <laughs> uh, sounds like a plan to me, don't it? Sounds like a plan to me. So yeah, until then... That has been the start of Intense Scorpions, featuring no scorpions, guaranteed. Just imagine a forgotten beast showing up or a titan that's just a giant scorpion that kills the fortress. Well, I mean, obviously a forgotten beast can't right now, we don't have access to the cavern layer. But we're planning to opening it, but we're planning to get the cavern layer seen at least, so it could happen. You never know. <laughs> uh, but that's all for next time. See you then. Goodbye for now.